The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, after, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw that it was the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered to him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. For those of you that don't know, my name is Mike Sayanis, and I am the Minister of Youth here at Abiding Presence. I've been blessed with this position for a number of years, and I always look forward to sharing a message with you on Sunday mornings. The Gospel reading this morning takes place during the evening of Easter Sunday. All of the disciples had just witnessed the events that had happened on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and that morning they went and found that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, that he had risen. I can only imagine what they must be feeling at this time. They had just seen Jesus being dragged off and nailed to the cross. Their friend, their teacher, their Messiah has died in front of them and they know the people that did this to him. I know if that would have been me, if, if I would have been there, I would have been scared out of my mind, just, just thinking, if they can do this to Jesus, what are, what are they going to do to the rest of us? So all the disciples, except for Thomas, for some reason, were hiding in a room behind locked doors, fearful that people were coming to get them. And I'm sure as they all gathered there, they were talking about the events that had tra transpired and trying to figure out, what are we going to do next? Then all of a sudden, Jesus appears before them and says, peace be with you. Jesus shows the disciples the wounds on his hands and his side. And the disciples realize that Jesus is standing before them. And they rejoice and they celebrate. Then Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. I can only imagine being a witness to this wonderful thing and being a part of this experience and wanting to share it with anyone that isn't there. The disciples went and found Thomas. They ran to him and they said, we have seen the Lord. And his response, I really kind of believe that it would have been kind of like some of our responses might have been. Yeah, sure, right, you did. This is not something to joke around about, guys. We shouldn't, don't stop pulling my leg about this. He finishes off the interaction by saying to the disciples that unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and I place my fingers in them and I place my hand in his side, I will not believe. 
Reading this part of the gospel today really kind of takes me back to my time in high school. My senior year of high school, I worked at an Italian restaurant called the Original Pasta Company. This restaurant was located in a very affluent part of town, kind of think of Alamo Heights. Um, and a lot of the pro Houston teams had players that kind of lived around that area. So it was not uncommon to see them, see some Houston Rockets or some, some Houston Astros in the shops or in grocery stores or restaurants. So I had learned over the years that I should keep some, some baseballs, some footballs, and some basketballs in the trunk of my car just in case I were out and saw someone that I might want to get an autograph from. And during high school, I was able to get a number of autographs from Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Mario Eli, Thurman Thomas, who played for the Buffalo Bills. He uh, played at our arch rival, so we were always big fans of him, and Robert Ory. Uh, most of the time, this would happen in parking lots of grocery stores or restaurants, and even sometimes after the movies. My senior year, it seemed that almost every Thursday night that the Rockets were in town, around closing time, Robert Rory would call, it, call in a to-go order to the restaurant that I worked at. I always made sure that my section was kind of towards the front of the store so that I could deliver his food to him when he came to pick it up. And after I had waited on him about three or four times, I got a basketball out of the trunk of my car and I, I left it in the the to-go podium by the front door, and instead of a tip, I was going to ask if he would sign my basketball. And that night when he came in, he graciously signed my basketball and took his order, and he still even left me a tip, which I thought was great. Um, <laughs> at that time, uh, my buddy Sean was even a bigger Rockets fan than I was, and his birthday was right around the corner. And one of his favorite players was the new kid on the team, Robert Ory. Now, this was before Robert Ory had turned into Big Shot Bob, uh, the man with seven NBA titles. He won two with Houston, he won three with the Lakers, and he also won two with your San Antonio Spurs. Uh, he had not quite reached that legendary status yet, um, but that summer he was going to win the first of his two titles with the Rockets. So I was really pumped to be able to give Sean that autographed basketball for his birthday. Uh, Sean and I went to church together, and so we saw each other a lot. And I had kind of been talking up the gift that I had got him. I was like, you're really going to like it. It's pretty cool. And uh, I just remember sitting there at his party. Uh, he was unwrapping the basketball, and he saw the signature. And he just looked at me, and he was like, no way. This is real. Where did you get this? And I told him. You know, I had Robert Rory sign it at, at the restaurant a couple weeks ago. He said, this has to be fake. And try as I might, I could not convince him that it was real. Now, you have to remember, this was a time before, you know, this was the time before no, everyone didn't have a cell phone in their pocket. They didn't have a, a camera at the ready. So I really had no way to prove to him that that had happened. And just like Downing Thomas, he had to see to believe it. You just had to have proof. And unfortunately, we live in a skeptical world where many times we have to prove everything to everyone all the time. Someone asks, hey, what's the capital of New York? You say, Albany. They respond, I thought it was Manhattan. You say, mm, I'm pretty sure it's Albany. And then their final response, nine times out of 10 is, ah, don't worry, I'll Google it. And they look it up and they say, oh, yeah, you're right. It, it is Albany. Your word many times nowadays is just not good enough. Proof is something that, that we need. And when Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, here I am, touch my hands and place your hand in my side, Thomas then responds, my Lord, my God. Jesus says to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This statement from Jesus in the gospel reminds me of all of the times that I have seen Jesus at work in my life. Whether that be the teacher that's willing to stay late after school to help a student with algebra, seeing a grandfather invite a homeless man to eat lunch with his family after church, the friend that stays late after school to give you a ride home, 
the person that welcome in the lost and the hungry to the feast instead of turning them away. I truly believe that the unchurched can see Jesus through you. How we treat others and how we interact with them through kindness, compassion, and love, even when it is not given in return. You can see the face of Christ in these actions. These are the times when those that have not been raised in the church that doubt the living Lord in their lives start to see hope and hopefully love. That seed of faith starts to get planted in their lives and hopefully it grows roots and is able to grow strong. As Christians, I believe it is our duty, perhaps even our calling, to reflect God's love into the world. People can see Christ through you and leave no doubt in their mind about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not always easy to accomplish, and I have to admit for me it is a daily struggle. Uh, when someone cuts me off in traffic in 281 or steals a parking spot that I'm waiting for at HEB, I have to admit my first thoughts are not, God bless you. <laughs> They're normally much worse. And uh, trusting in God's grace takes work every day. The next Thursday after Sean's birthday, I invited him to come to the restaurant. I said, hey, why don't you and your girlfriend go see a movie and come to the pasta company around 10 o'clock? I said, I know it's kind of late, but uh, I'll buy you dinner. And hoping in the back of my mind that Robert already may uh, order his takeout that night. And sure enough, just before closing time, a familiar voice called and ordered the usual fettuccine Alfredo with chicken and an eggplant parmesan to go. And I made sure that I had set Sean close to the door so that he could see everyone that was coming in and coming out. And when Mr. Ori came to pick up his food, I saw Sean's mouth kind of hit the floor. And he paid, and he went over there, and he signed his little thing. And I went over to Sean's table, and he just had this surprised look on his face. And I handed him a note that said, Happy birthday, Sean, Robert Ori. I told him to take the note and compare it to the signature on the basketball. You will see they are very similar. <laughs> Doubt is something that we all experience. You never know how it is going to creep into your mind. It could be at work, at school, in relationships that you have, or in other parts of your everyday life. Placing faith in the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is hard, and often sometimes a challenge. It just takes a little faith to block out the doubt. Proof is great, but over the years, I've found that placing your faith in Christ calms your mind, warms your heart, and soothes your soul. Amen.